There are 13 playable characters across the four Arkham games, and in the last couple days I've spent way too much time in challenge maps and struggling with corrupted DLC, so I can bring you this. The definitive ranking of all the Arkham playable characters, not including the variations of Batman. Actually, definitive is a strong word for a chump like me who just likes it when strong guy goes punch. This ranking isn't based on who's technically the most efficient to play or complicated stats that I don't have the attention span for. No. This is purely based on fun gameplay, cool factor, and how satisfying it feels to use these characters. So, which one's the best? There's one additional playable character in Arkham Asylum, and that's Joker, baby. I never got to play as him as a kid since it was a PS3 exclusive, and I was a cool Halo playing Doritos Munchin teen with a 360. It wasn't until I got the remaster that I was finally able to play as the Clown Prince. So of all the characters on this list, this is the one I've spent the least time with, and I think that's just fine. This is as simple as it gets, but for this character, in this game, I really appreciate it. The best part of playing as Joker is just how silly he is, down to the way he struts around. What a douche! While the Asylum free flow system was a bit basic, his cosmetic updates add a lot of fresh flair. The way he incorporates his gas as a stun move in combat and can fire a singular instant kill is entertaining, and I love the detail of him firing the empty gun and it just clicking? Also, considering you're battling wholly new opponents like Arkham Guards, Cash, Gordon, and I think even Frank Bowles, that makes it even more fun. If only Warden Sharp got in the mix, so I could hit him with a buzzer takedown. In Predator mode, I love how Joker has to get around like a normal guy. There's no crazy pogo stick jump to get on a gargoyle. He can't even jump through a glass window. He also doesn't have the ability to use detective mode by default. It's a gadget, and he can't move while using it. That sucks for gameplay, but fits him and the universe perfectly. His pistol and joker teeth are the only other gadgets he needs. They're both super effective and downright fun, dude. That's just it with Joker. There doesn't have to be too many layers to him. However, that's also his biggest problem. He's a little too flat, fun for a while, but not complex enough to enjoy for hours on end. So while I have a good time playing as the clown, he lands squarely in the awkward category. For me, Catwoman in Arkham City is the one that started it all. From the opening of the game through to her challenge campaigns, this was an incredible addition to the Arkhamverse that felt like more than a fresh coat of makeup over Batman, and is the entire reason the series continued to add new playable characters. She has an entirely unique way of traversing the map, and her gadgets feel handcrafted to fit her character. The Bolas, Kyle Trops, and Whip are all great. The addition of Thief Vision is where things get a little funky, but it is a video game. But the thing that stands out about Catwoman is her speed. The way she can whip around the arena is second to none, and she does it all with her own custom animations that are smooth as hell and match her personality. Plus, she's the only character in the entire franchise that you can use to traverse the open world. She has her own mini story, collectibles, and missions. While her traversal leaves a little something to be desired, it still works in the smaller map of Arkham City, and her ability to cling to certain ceilings somewhat makes up for it. The one major con I can find with her is that she's a little too weak, taking additional time with her silent and ground takedowns to the point where if you're too used to Batman's speed, this could really compromise you. Overall though, this is where it started and I still love it. She's Professor Pig approved perfection. Robin in Arkham City is another fantastic and unique addition to the cast that carves out his own corner of the Arkhamverse with a distinct fighting style and gadgets. The bow staff is a perfect way to set Robin apart from Batman immediately, plus giving him that shield, the snap flashes, a zip kick, and a shuriken make him feel different enough while still fitting within the universe. He even gets more than one dedicated DLC where he takes on Harley Quinn in Black Mask, so this game was really giving him some love. He's also one of the few characters aside from Batman that has a cape, 
which is a major plus for enjoying the basic traversal that Arkham City perfected. Also, design-wise, I prefer this Robin with his hood up rather than the Arkham Knight version showing off his bizarre buzz cut. This Robin may come across as a little too similar to Batman with his remote-controlled shuriken and weighty combat, but I don't have many cons, unless you want to count that you couldn't play as him in the open world. With a couple more tweaks, he'd be ranked higher, but in Arkham City, he is rock solid. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I fucking love Nightwing in Arkham City. Funnily enough, he's the only playable character who isn't voiced at all, which kind of adds to his charm and mystique. Look at that creepy ass wink. How could I not love him? Of all the characters, Nightwing did not need to be in Arkham City, but Rocksteady blessed us with this gem anyway. Somehow, this game managed to make three additional characters feel wholly distinct from the base model, while still fitting perfectly into the established combat and stealth gameplay. The best thing about Nightwing is how himself he feels. He's the only one to use the wing ding, electric blast, wrist darts, and eschrisma sticks in the entire franchise. Even his detective mode is replaced with night vision. Its aesthetic distinction and homemade feel provides enough context to tell a story about his relationship with Batman at this time, and I think that was such an inspired decision. Although it's not as good as standard detective mode, it gets the job done. While combat is pretty samey compared to Robin, except for the incorporation of electricity for whatever reason, stealth is where this character really stands out. The ability to instant take down goons with wrist darts to the dome is incredible, and lining up a few goons to get rocked with a ricocheting Eschrisma stick will never not feel satisfying. Really, the only downside to Nightwing is his lack of a cape, which makes traversal objectively worse. While he didn't receive anything additional to make up for it like Catwoman did, he was given the line launcher to mix up verticality. So, for this game, where Nightwing is limited to combat arenas or fairly small stealth maps, his limited traversal isn't a major deal. If you can't tell already, Arkham City Nightwing is Professor Pig approved perfection. Somehow, Bruce Wayne still managed to make it onto these rankings. In Arkham Origins, you get to experience an even younger Bruce in the final stages of his super ninja training. He plays how you'd expect a stripped down Batman to play, exactly like a ninja. His gadgets include Caltrops, Shuriken, and a Zip Kick, which makes him feel more like a blend between Robin and Catwoman than his usual arsenal, and that really distinguishes this character. But the most unique thing to him is his Kujiki Bomb, which functions in two very different ways. In combat, you have to throw it down to initiate a multi-ground takedown, which I think is appropriately scrappy, while in stealth, it's completely broken. The smoke makes Bruce completely undetectable, which is cool? But I wish it looked a little cooler, more of an all-consuming Phantasm-style smoke, rather than a stink cloud. Overall, I prefer this character in combat over stealth, which is a little surprising. But he just has a distinct combat style, including a shuriken volley, whereas in stealth, he feels a little wonky. For example, the mandatory double shuriken is the worst idea I've ever seen in any of these games. It makes interacting with the environment, like hitting a fire extinguisher to trap a goon in smoke, damn near impossible because you'll just hit both. Also, the fact that he has concentration vision, which acts exactly like detective mode, is plain old stupid. He shouldn't have enhanced vision at all, which should be part of the challenge of playing as a pre-Batman Bruce Wayne. Despite some lows, the highs more than make up for them, making Bruce Wayne a rock-solid pick. I'm convinced that after that one boss battle, no one knew what to do with Deathstroke in this franchise. He's a joke in Arkham Knight, and his long foreshadowed operations with the Suicide Squad will never pay off. So I guess I'm only a little disappointed that in Arkham Origins, he plays like a mix of 80% Batman and 10% Robin and Nightwing each. All his gadgets are essentially stolen from those characters, but with a new skin. I like the aesthetic he has. I guess he comes off as more deadly? even though not really. He doesn't have a single lethal gadget like Joker or Red Hood. He has Robin's little snap flashes and a glorified dart gun that doesn't function with the weird first-person aiming Nightwing had, 
that I liked. It all has the same functionality, just with a totally tactical coat of paint, down to his tactical vision. The most unique thing he has is the remote claw, which Batman also has. Which is, of course, Deathstroke's biggest problem. He feels too much like Batman. The only real difference is the staff, and I appreciate that he uses it differently than Robin does, but it feels like he should be a little more agile. It's like he's weighed down by the staff and his armor, so he feels a bit too heavy or clunky. I can't quite put my finger on why I feel this way. It may partly be that everyone is a little clunky in this game. I would have loved to have Deathstroke playable in Arkham Knight. He could be the only one with the Remote Claw, and that would have made him unique and speedy as hell. He could have even had a fun Arkham episode too, training the militia and dealing with the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow prior to the assault. But, alas, he is the way he is, and it's just kind of whatever. We're back to Robin. Hood down. Everything I said about the Arkham City Robin applies to Arkham Knight as well. He feels perfectly distinct from Batman, in a game that struggled to level up playable characters to match the insane increase in scale, Robin was given just enough to make him feel effective. His combat remains relatively unchanged from City, but his gadgets saw one key addition, the remote hacking device. Not only does this fit his character, but it levels up his stealth sequences, giving him a range of fresh possibilities that make him feel clever and competent. Robin's cape and traversal is even more important in this game due to the increased map sizes and more open space. Despite not having the crazy grapnel boost or dive bomb abilities, he still feels just as efficient as Batman since he's only playable in challenge arenas rather than the open world. Also, he's one of a few characters who can participate in dual team combat and stealth, which only enhances his experience. He may not be the flashiest character to play as, but he's reliable, and everything from basic combat to gadgets to stealth feels entirely unique. Arkham Knight levels up Robin and gets Professor Pig's approval perfection. Catwoman is on the opposite end of the spectrum. Whereas Robin somehow managed to keep up with the jump in gameplay from City to Night, Catwoman suffers from a lack of innovation. She plays nearly identically to how she did in City, but it just feels a little worse. That really shines through in her stealth sequences, where she feels out of her league, more equipped for the small scale maps of City, and is also outright nerfed for no good reason at all. Sure, she still has her own unique jumping and climbing mechanic, but she can't walk across tight ropes like every other character except Harley. If there was any character who should be able to do that in this entire franchise, it's her. So what the hell? Not only is she limited in her gadgets, keeping the same three from City, but her traversal suffers even more in this game compared to the rest of the Bat family, and she gets nothing new to make up for that. Yes, she can still climb around on ceilings, but that option is only available in a select number of maps. So, if you're playing Catwoman on a map that was not specifically designed with her in mind, you are at a major disadvantage. Her combat is still great, they definitely sped up her ground takedown, and she can do dual team combat challenges, so that's something, but her stealth gameplay simply couldn't keep up with the change from city to night and her fun factor pays the price. This version of Catwoman is one you need to be in a particular mood to play as, which makes her a little awkward. If you thought the Catwoman falloff was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. In Arkham Knight, Nightwing is a complete letdown and suffers from a massive downgrade. Now that the character finally has a voice actor and is integrated into the story, you'd think he would've improved but I guess once you achieve perfection, the only place left to go is down. My major problem with Nightwing is that they took away nearly everything that made him unique and fun, so he comes off as a half-assed Batman clone with an electricity fetish. Gone is the night vision, wrist darts, and wing ding, to be replaced by the remote electrical charge and voice synthesizer. Cool. The game doubled down on the electricity gimmick, and let me just say, 
That always sucked. The electric blast is fucking lame. The stun makes some sense, but was clearly just based on the pre-existing stun baton model in Arkham City, and I would have preferred the stun kick that Red Hood has. The one cool addition is the electricity chain stun in combat. His fighting animations are just about perfect, but for all his athleticism, he feels a little clunky, especially moving around a stealth arena. Just like Catwoman, Nightwing is under-equipped to traverse in this game. He should have been able to compensate for that in some way, but he's also nerfed from where he was in City because the game removed his line launcher. He feels lesser than, and it's immersion breaking to wonder how the hell Nightwing could protect his own city when he'd clearly struggle to keep up with Robin, let alone Batman. The removal of the wingding and wrist darts also leaves him entirely unsuited for stealth. The electricity blast is the only thing unique to him now, and it's the complete opposite of sneaky if they just kept the darts. Why remove the darts? While this Nightwing remains well characterized and is objectively not a bad time, he has taken a severe beating, and frankly, it's sad. Azrael is just Batman. There's nothing unique to him at all. Even in specific areas where he should be unique, like the fact that he doesn't have a cape, he isn't. The game just treats seven strips of plastic like a cape, and the sight of it drives me nuts. He's really more of a skin for Batman than he is his own character. He had potential to be something at least slightly different, but for some reason, that's not the way things shook out, which is sad. Six years later, Harley Quinn feels like a refreshed version of Asylum's Joker. Her combat is just a damn fun time, she's as speedy as Catwoman, yet as brutal as Red Hood. And we can't overlook Mayhem Mode, which adds a fun flavor that no other character can match. Just like with Joker, it's her limited gadgets and special moves that are lacking. Since Harley is a brick shithouse tank, there's nothing stealthy about her, and while I do appreciate that, it makes stealth feel tacked on and strange. The way she has to super leap to get some verticality is ridiculous, but at least she isn't doing that up to gargoyles. If they wanted her to have some stealth capability, the game should have given her a mechanic similar to Catwoman's where Harley wall jumps her way up. But ultimately, she doesn't even have a silent takedown. She's as loud as can be, which is a fun change of pace, but there's no map where that's really welcome. She's really got nothing to do, so much so that one of her stars is just to do five cartwheels in a row. The best aspect of her stealth gameplay is her version of detective mode, psychosis mode, where the two personalities of Harley talk to each other in her head. They didn't need to go this hard for a vision mode Harley shouldn't even have, but they did, and it only serves to enhance her personality and character. It's really, really inspired and fun, but Harley is completely useless in a stealth situation, which means she's useless like 50% of the time, landing her securely in the awkward category. Batgirl suffers from the same problem that Asriel does. She's just Batman, but at least she had the decency to be slightly worse, which makes her slightly better? She doesn't have some of the same gadgets that Batman and Asriel share, also lacking the Arkham Knight era moves like Grapnel Boost and Fear Takedowns. Otherwise, she has nothing unique to her other than her animations, which do go a long way at defining her different combat style, but not far enough to make her feel like anything more than a lesser version of the character you spent the bulk of the time playing as. Her slight differences keep her from the bottom of the pile, but overall, she's just… whatever. Finally, the titular villain of the final game, Arkham Todd. There's no character that plays quite like him in the entire series. He's a straight up killer and can plow through combat and stealth situations with the use of his mighty guns. That makes him a little more complicated, and he's the character I've struggled the most with placing on this ranking. In combat, he's not as much of a tank as you'd assume him to be. His special takedowns are brutal, and his unlimited ammo guns are effective, 
but he feels a little clunky and lacking. His quickfire gadgets are just a zip kick, glorified stun, and his guns. He can easily handle a basic goon but lacks the skill set to make taking on large crowds of varied goons fun without just trying to kill everyone as often as possible. Then there's stealth gameplay, where Red Hood feels like a walking cheat code. Unloading a barrage of unlimited ammo is fun and feels amazing. This game may make you feel like the Batman, but these challenges make you feel like the Red Hood. It's beyond easy to blow away goons, which kind of becomes a detriment in its own way. There's no need for any level of finesse with this character. You can blast everyone from long range as often as you'd like. In that way, the game incentivizes you to use Red Hood as a one-trick pony. It's a great, glorious pony, but it is just a pony. What am I even saying? At the end of the day, despite being able to unleash all your inner rage by blasting goons in the face, Red Hood feels a little too limited in his arsenal, which makes gameplay repetitive with little room for varied, fresh approaches, landing Jason in the awkward category. I'm sure I'm going to be changing my mind on certain characters within a month, but this is my list as of now. What do you think? I just know I've upset someone. Is it you? Please let me know your ranking in the comments because I'm genuinely curious where you people stand. Thanks so much for watching and take care.